Hello there, welcome to uh, Breakfast Daily on City TV and the City Breakfast Show on 97.3 City FM. My name is Ni Lati Lati. Welcome especially to the Oxfam Tax Dialogues here on City TV as well as City FM. And today we are bringing you one conversation on tax administration and tax accountability. More often than not, we get to hear a lot of people say that I do not know what my taxes are being used for. Why should I continue? to pay tax and the difficulty thereof. And so that's why we are having this conversation as part of the Oxfam Tax Dialogues here on this platform. And today I'm joined in studio by two uh, guests. First off is Jennifer Moffat. She is acting country manager and head of programs at Budget Ghana, as well as Ni Ado from the Integrated Social Development Center. That's ISODEC and he is manager of the illicit financial flows uh, academy training or training academy and they've joined us here to have this conversation with us and so i want to welcome them especially into the studio i can see that they are all smiling and so they are here to give us the information that we need as far as you know tax administration and tax accountability is concerned jennifer anthony welcome thank you thank you very much our <laughs> host <laughs> it's always a pleasure to have some of you here in studio to help us shape the conversation for us. And so today, we are talking about tax administration, tax accountability. I don't know if the two words are being used interchangeably. They have the same meaning. Maybe you have to break it down for us because that's the main purpose we are in. And because Jennifer is on my immediate left and they say ladies first, maybe I have to give her the opening remarks. <laughs> um, thank you so much, Ni. Um, we are excited to be here and tax is a particular topic when we from the CSO space so I'm from Budget Ghana when you go to town hall meetings you are engaging having community engagement it's one topic that most people do not really want they don't actually understand the whole process and then to they're not interested mm. so um, it's a very good um, point to start as a point of education. Mm. So all the time you get to the field, you have to start all over again explaining what taxes is or why they need to pay taxes. So um, you had tax administration, you had tax accountability, and in a way, you normally use them hand in hand. Mm. And um, tax accountability basically is telling us that um, as we are paying, so it's between a relationship between the government and the people. So government needs money to run. It needs, and it's not like working. So it is us as citizens that we have to contribute a quota for the development of the country. And so in you paying or giving your quota, that means that you are part of the process. And so in a way, not in a way, the government also has a duty to also be accountable to you, to tell you that, oh, you have been paying this amount of money, and as you have paid it, this is what I use the money for. So tax accountability and tax administration is actually a two-way affair. Mm. It is for the citizens and also from the citizen and also from the government. Mm. So all two has to come together to be able to have that tax conversation. Mm. A two-way street, you want to it describe is. it. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't know what you have to add to this as a preliminary comment. All right, so... Um, um, like you said, I'm Ni Ado. Um, I work with ISODEC. Then uh, also, I also manage the Elizabeth Financial Flows Academy uh, that we set up, I think, about two years ago. Now, um, tax administration is, is to explain to the layman is how taxes are collected, the, the kind of um, measures that are put in place by the institution called GRE to be able to collect taxes from the individuals. And then we have types of the taxes. We have the, the corporate income taxes and then we also have the, uh, the personal income taxes. And we have other ones like the VAT. But um, um, just to, to give you an overview of that, in this country as Ghana, you know, our taxes, our business year starts from 1st January to um, um, 31st December. December, yes. 
And of course, uh, because that is the process, that is our business year, every um, 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 company or business that is operating within the jurisdiction of Ghana must be able to pay, file in their taxes from, um, I think, four months after the year has ended. And, and then within that, um, the country has also given some measures to ensure that taxes are collected quarterly. So we have the, the March, we have the May, uh, the June, we have September, then we have the December. Okay, so within the accounting year, uh, as, as, an, as, a, as a company or as a business institution, as opposed to filing your taxes, um, you have the pay, payee taxes that you file. You also, you also, yes, you also have the taxes that, um, in terms of your profit that you have, whether it's profit or loss, you're supposed to file into to, to, um, the institution called GRE. Now, um, um, within the same tax administration process, there is the need to have that accountability measure where you say that, okay, fine, as an individual or as a company, the taxes that I'm paying to the institution called GRE and is going to the Consolidated Fund of Ghana, yeah. how is the uh, taxes or the monies that comes into the Consolidated Fund disbursed? Um, um, what, is, what is it being used? So I'm supposed to see uh, a good road uh, because I'm paying my taxes. I'm supposed to see uh, some essential services like the uh, water, uh, electricity. I'm supposed to see medicals, uh, hospital, clinics. And, and so if I'm not, seeing, I'm not seeing all these things, then it means that there's a question of accountability. So the administration is there, is not only to collect, collect, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, the individual must also have the feel that what I'm paying, I'm seeing the benefit of it. Mm -hmm. So simply put, if GRE comes to collect their taxes, you as a business our or taxes. our taxes. Thank you. <laughs> because you're all Ghanaians, yes. I should put myself in a yes. conversation. That's fine. So if GRE comes to collect our taxes, as Jennifer wants me to describe it, we should not only be interested in the collection, but the disbursement and utilization of the, these taxes. And even beyond that, we should ensure that there is transparency throughout the process. That's it. I see. Mm -hmm. What's your own assessment mm -hmm. of the tax accountability regime in Ghana? Well, um, um, you, 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 the thing is that it's a process. Mm. And, and, and from where I see it, we are doing well, but we've not reached the low level. So... So if there's a space between zero to low before you can go high, mm. I think we are between zero and low, <laughs> yes. And I'm saying that because um, everyone is entitled to accountability because once you are paying your tax, you are supposed to know what your taxes are doing. So for instance, I'm paying my taxes. Um, uh, can the government tell me that this school is built by your taxes and put uh, and put your taxes from uh, uh, on it? Just like the, uh, when we had the EPIC. So the EPIC funds, you know that when you go into school structures and you go into, they say that this is EPIC fund. Yeah. Can we do something like same same thing like that and say that this is funded by your taxes? Because if I'm not seeing these things and you go and take loan to build those infrastructures, then my taxes have not been responsive. Mm -hmm. You understand me? So I will say that oh, the government is doing something is doing because you can't say government is not doing anything because. When you travel around, you can see there's development going on. But where is the money taken from? Is it from our taxes or is it coming from uh, 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 other, other sources? Mm -hmm. Jennifer, let us have a basic understanding. When we talk about accountability, is it that a business or ordinary Ghanaian will just walk to GRE and then go and ask, 
I want to know what my taxes are being used for. Or it is the government that must come out to tell us what the taxes are being used for when it comes to the accountability. Good question. And <clears throat> usually when he, um, topics about accountability comes in, everybody becomes defensive. Like one key thing, anytime you are in a way and you are asked to be accountable, you start getting defensive because no one likes accountability. You, are, uh -huh, you have to ask yourself, like, why, why is, she, is he or she saying that I feel like they are asking because they don't trust me or something. But accountability is very, very important. Not just in taxes, not just, but in every aspect of our lives, accountability is important. So when it comes to government and accountability, or it comes to citizen and accountability, because in as much as we are asking government to be accountable, we also have to be accountable by paying our taxes. Mm. But then the key word now is, are there structures or is the process in which you are supposed to be accountable, which is like paying your taxes mm. as a citizen, uh, one of your civic duties to pay your taxes. All right. Is that process open enough? Do people actually even understand what they're supposed to pay, how much they're supposed to pay? Is it that plain, right? And coming back to your question, your question is asking us um, if a layman can go to government and ask the government to be accountable. That's why we have structures in place. There are processes that have been put in place to ensure accountability. So for instance, when the government comes to read a uh, Minister for Finance, last year, November, his nice white attire our with his Minister bag. Of finance. Yes, former, <laughs> thanks for the correction. Picks his bag and then goes to Parliament to go and talk to Parliament about, I have a budget, I want you to approve the budget. In this budget, you are going to use this amount of money for this, you are going to use this amount of money for this. But one key thing they will start with will tell you that these are revenue, these are uh, expenditure, expenditure, and there's always a, a deficit. deficit. <laughs> like, that's the beauty of our thing. There's always a deficit. And one of the key things we ask ourselves as CSOs and as, for me, as a young person in Ghana is, can't we live within our revenue, right? So that process is one of the accountability mm, measures because it gives us an idea how much we are going to earn projected. After that, it's going to tell you, this is how much I'm going to spend. So your money that you are even going to earn is, is not enough. enough. The taxes they are going to collect is not enough. So the deficit, you know, even if you are running a business and you, you have a, a projection, a budget which is more, it's either you are going to live within, do the project within your means, or you're going to take loan. So that one also comes in. Aside the reading of the budget, national budget, we also have processes like the Auditor General also mm -hmm. coming out with this report, which is like for us in Budget Ghana, is one of the key things we always look out for. Because that's one of the key ways we are able to know exactly what government is spending and how it is being spent. So even recently, um, we, I was discussing with my team we are bringing in, in Nigeria, we, my uh, organization started in Nigeria mm. in 2011. We have a process in Nigeria called Tracker. It's, a, it's an application where citizens are able to, wherever you are, you are able to take a picture of if there's any abandoned projects, an ongoing project that has stalled for so long, you can take a picture, you can give comments, you can even read what is happening in your community. So it is a form of participatory governance. So we were discussing about bringing tracker. But one funny thing with Nigeria, or not funny, but it's a good thing, is that in as much as Nigeria has its own issues, every state in Nigeria, they have something called state of state, like a gov spend um, platform, where they, uh, they project every money that is going out. I ask myself, in Ghana, do we have a platform where every expenditure, every project, everything that we are doing so is this is there like happening in real time? In real time. That as a citizen, I don't need to um, go to, let's say, Ministry of Local Government to go and ask them for data on what was expended in my community. Because let's take it, our national budget does not really tell us, it gives you sectorial allocations, mm -hmm. but does not really tell us what is going into our communities, what is going into the districts. We don't have those data. So if you need something like this, maybe local government will be able to provide that. 
I went on the website for the past one week. The website is still under construction. Mm. They said, sorry for the inconvenience, blah, blah, blah. But that's another way. So Auditor General's report gives us an understanding of what is happening at the various, various places that we can tap in. So it is a way of accountability. Aside that, we also even have the, the PAC, Parliament, uh, the Public, Account, Public Committee. Account Committee of Parliament. That's another way of accountability as well for us. So if you want to know what is really happening or how much your money is being spent, that's another way of you knowing. Aside that, we also even have the Finance, um, um, finance Committee in Parliament, which also takes up some of these things of national interest, things that every citizen must know about. So those are the measures that is in place. Aside this, this is the, it's not like you, the citizen, you are actually part of this process. Exactly so the point you, I was coming, because <laughs> all these that you mentioned looks like at the highest level. Yes. But when it comes to the basic level, what really is happening? So you as a citizen would ask yourself that, so I don't actually know how much, in one of our town halls, I think we did it in Ada, the um, assembly men that we brought on the, um, the um, event could not even tell us how much was even allocated to them for COVID. Mm. They said they themselves are still asking for that data and they don't have. <laughs> so as a citizen, your first contact with government should be your local representative, mm. which in this regard for your uh, locality should be your assemblyman. So, Either your assemblyman is coming on a town hall meeting with you people or your MP is doing a town hall meeting. These are the key points. You are able to ask some of these things. But the truth is, how can you ask if you yourself, you do not know no. how much was allocated? Mm -hmm. So if we are supposed to have a school building project and they started, they started digging, they stopped, or they just did one block, they stopped, how would you know that actually they were supposed to do three blocks of school? building but they only did one so these are all issues that always crops up and why some people will avoid or evade tax i see uh, that's some rich history background and then information you've provided with that i'm sure government is listening citizens are listening so when you have an opportunity to ask for tax accountability these are some of the avenues Avenue. you can fall on but let me go back to me quickly I remember some years back, I think somewhere in 2009, they said that because of some restructuring in our tax administration, they decided to bring IRS, that's Internal mm -hmm. Revenue Service, service. the value-added tax service, and also the customs, excise, and preventive service, that's and service to come together to form what we now have as Ghana Revenue yeah, Authority, that's GRE. But one, quickly, has this particular one yielded any positive results? And these reforms, have they actually worked? If not, what is the way forward for us as a country if we want to ensure greater tax accountability and administration? Hmm. So maybe I'll, I'll take some, then you, you ask a follow-up. <laughs> right, so, um, well, um, your, I mean, your question is right in the sense that they brought all these institutions together to be, to be able to collect the needed revenue. The institutions were brought together to be able to foster one administration and then also um, um, sort of, you know, people, all the institutions were doing things in silos. And of course, it, is, it didn't help. Uh, when it comes to reporting, mm -hmm. so they were merged to be able to to be able to foster one agenda. Now, um, um, I would say that the coming together was a good point because at the end of the day, uh, now they are working collaboratively. But as to whether they've achieved. Um, um, I'm yet, I'm yet to, to know whether we, they've achieved the purpose. But since government has not... So 10 years after, yes. if you 
in your own perspective or assessment believes that well this has not worked mm -hmm. what then should we be doing going forward no uh, um, well I, I understand you but i also don't think that they should go back to uh, work separately um, because um, you know under the uh, uh, revenue administration act mm -hmm. Uh, I think it's 2016 Act um, uh, 915. Um, it gives them the kind of audacity by the sole discretion of the uh, uh, commissioner to go into companies, to go into institutions and probe and ask questions about their, their tax uh, system and uh, so that they, are, they will be able to give a good accountable, uh, I mean, they'll be able to account for the business period, like I explained earlier. But you see, when, when um, uh, you look at it from different angles, it's as if the institution is not working. It's as if it's working. We will say the institution is working because at the end of the day, it is able to tell us that at the end of the accounting year, I was able to meet my target. Yeah. And then GRA will tell you that I'm setting a high target. I think now uh, they've increased it to 1.7 or 1.9 million Ghana cities for, for no, billion for, for a year. Now, the, the, the question is, if all this money is collected, how is the money expended? Um, if this is achieved, how is it expended? And one of the one of the areas that you can see that there is there's always a discrepancy when it comes to reporting is the mining, uh, the extractive industry. So all the time, government will say that move there and go and do audit, all right. And out of the audit, they are able to identify certain lapses and they are able to correct them. So you admit that Ghana has one of the lowest tax to GDP ratio mm -hmm. in Africa, it's way below, you know, the continent average. Yet government keeps imposing taxes every now and then. It's good you mention Nigeria, what Nigeria is doing for us to learn some lessons. So even as you summarize for us to end the show today, what should be the key takeaways for government for GRE as an institution, for the district assemblies, and for us as citizens? So for? Maybe there government, are even more. <laughs> citizen, GRE. So for everyone? Local governments. Okay, so one of the key things which is, is key, is plain, mm. is that if you are actually paying your taxes, then you really care about what your money is being used for. So we, we are told that um, Ghana's um, uh, economy has like 70% of it is informal. Mm. But then out of that 70% which are informal, we have to ask ourselves how many of them are actually paying taxes. Mm. So it is, if we are having um, just 30% paying taxes, it's still the same 30% that we are, we are taxing over and over and over More again. More like a vicious cycle. Yes, so indirect, <laughs> both direct and indirect. So direct taxes is what they take from our salary, you know. They, you take your pay slip, you check, Charlie, this amount of money. Then when you, you are driving and then you hit the, a pothole, the, <laughs> the first thing you're thinking in your head is, hey, my shocks. So you realize that I paying my taxes because directly I'm paying, indirectly I'm paying. When I go to shop right to buy something, I'll pay tax. I make a call, I'm paying tax. I buy data, I'm paying tax. Even right now, even me driving my car, I'll be paying tax on it if it goes through anyway. So you ask, so if I am, because I'm paying so much taxes, automatically I care to know what is actually happening with my money. Yes, it is my money. It is my small, small money is entering into the consolidated fund. So I'm, I'm hoping to see that my roads are done. Achimota, you, I was this morning when I was sitting waiting for our turn, you saw a, a large portion of the road, no lights, mm. and we are paying tax on for street lights yeah. and all that. Yet who the question now becomes is who do you ask? So if we are not willing, the, the, for citizen. You have, if you are part of the tax net and 
GRE, the government itself have broadened the tax net to include a lot of people from the informal sector, then citizens will be part of the whole mm -hmm. process and then they will ask questions. They will be part and then they will be involved in everything that we are doing. But because we have a large number of people who are actually not paying the taxes, then you know that they are not even worried about it. So what am I saying to government? So if people are not paying their taxes, they can't ask for accountability yes. and vice versa. And they don't even care to ask because they are not really paying. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jennifer. Thank you very much, Niadu. This has been the Oxfam Tax Dialogues on 97.3 CTFM on the City Breakfast Show as well as Breakfast Daily on City TV. My guest today, as we delved into tax administration and tax accountability, Jennifer Moffat, Acting Country Manager, Head of Programs Budget Ghana, as well as Niadu from the Integrated Social Development Center, ISODEC, and also the manager of the Illicit Financial Flows Training Academy. Lady and gentlemen, thank you so much for being a part of the program today. I appreciate you coming, and I'm sure government as well as citizens have learned something for us to enhance revenue mobilization in the country. My name is Ni Lati Lati. Thanks indeed for your time.